your need done at the end of the day. He's the one that has to stay here between 6 to 7 to 7.30, and that's, that's just how it is. Usually before holiday, not always. I'm not saying that's our every day, but where the holidays come around and we have to kind of get a lot done, that's what happens. So then we go and we wait to the last minute to pack, whether we're traveling. I usually we travel. So you wait to the last minute to pack. It's usually about 8 o'clock at night, and you're trying to pack as much stuff into a bag as possible. And now having a baby, now all of a sudden I'm packing for me and a child and the other child. <laughs> but like, but so you're packing, and now you get done packing, and it's midnight, and you're like, oh, great. What time, babe, what time's our flight? And he's like, oh, it's at 8 a.m. Or it's at 6 a.m. It's something ridiculously stupid early. And I'm like, oh, 6? Cool. So we get to get up at 3? He's like, yep. <laughs> Great. That sounds awesome. You get on the plane. There's people that are sick. And because they were just doing the same thing, you were people sneezing in your face, all this, that, and the other. You get to your destination, and now you're sitting with family. And, man, no one, no one knows how to push your buttons like family does. <laughs> No one knows how to really just get down and irk you as much as your family does. If you see friends, and this used to, used to happen to me more than it does now, but I found that going through this process for people, there's something about chiropractic. As you start figure, feeling physically where you knew you were always supposed to be, there's something physical about it. There's something spiritual about it. Because when you're, when you're opening the connection from the brain down to the body, that's kind of as life moves through you and that life energy moves through you, I don't care what you call it, innate intelligence or God or whatever you want to say, it doesn't matter to me, but there's something that opens you up when all of those connections are firing in the way that they're supposed to. And then there's something super metaphysical about it. So there just is. There's, I was adjusting somebody today and I went and I adjusted her and I said something, I was like, you were time traveling. She said, what did you say? I said, you were time traveling? She said, why did you say that? I said, I don't know, sometimes I just say things. And she said, that is the most crazy thing I've ever heard because I went for a hike and before I left for a hike, I checked on a clock and it was 11.02. And I got halfway through my hike and I checked on a different clock that had broke and it was 11.02. And she's like, and then I got there to my destination and I looked down at something else that had stopped and it was 11.02. She's like, I thought that it was like some crazy premonition. She's like, I hiked to Swan Lake so I was nervous something between good and evil was going to happen on November 2nd. And I said, maybe? And she's like, she, she didn't understand. But, but there's something that happens when you start exchanging in energies. And I was like, time travel. That's what was going on. You were time traveling that day, whether you knew you were or not. You, were, you weren't working linear, but you were working exponentially. So then when you go through that process and you start growing as a person, sometimes when you see family, they still see you as a certain way. My family's pretty darn good, but Andrew's family, oh boy, lordy, lordy. Sometimes sitting down on the East Coast, I'm like, what is happening right now? And it's stressful for me. It's stressful for me to sit down with all of those Italians as they're all screaming at each other. No one's, no one's talking at one, like you don't get a turn and then you get a turn. It's just we all have the same turn at the same time. And I freak out. I start losing it. So then that anxiety and that stress is high. And then you sit down at dinner and it's just complete... I think my next slide. It's just complete, like, gluttony. Allie, this is terrible. <laughs> I don't know, but this is so bad. Um, but it's just complete gluttony. You literally feel like this guy at the end of it. It's, it's alcohol. And if you don't drink, but well, it's the holidays, you can drink. It's dessert that you don't eat. It's foods that you never combine together. And they, oh, sorry. Um, why is it tilted? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, there's um, there's this sense of just complete gluttony, essentially, that happens when you have food that... I don't think that made it better. It didn't. I don't, too. I'm sorry, you guys. So anyway, and then you sit down and you get done eating, right? You're done eating. But then something happens when you're around family and you walk out to the kitchen and you start picking eating. And picking eating happens as everyone sits and socializes and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I think I would feel so much better if I just got out and move. Do I get out and move? No. I go in the living room where everyone's sitting around, hanging out, talking, watching TV, which I also don't do. So then you're in there and you're hanging out, watching TV, hang talking about things that you're like, oh, I don't agree with anything that's being said. right. Just left and right and over and over and over. And then you go lay down at night to a bed that is the most uncomfortable bed you've ever been in. 
and then the next day is repeat. Is that, is that anywhere remotely close to where you guys sit? Right? It is, it's horrendous. And so as we go through these, being healthy through the holiday, we're gonna look at our thoughts, we're gonna look at different traumas that happen, emotional, physical, and then toxic trauma that happens, um, because those are all the three things that cause the subluxation, the misalignment, neurological interference in the body. Yeah. So what have we done, right? You've increased emotional stress, your workloads, your thought of just traveling on its own, um, old familial emotions, and then as you've grown as a person, you get to have almost kind of confronting, and confronting is not bad. It's one of the most loving things that you can do is confront somebody with something, but like some confronting um, dialogue with people where maybe you were friends for a long time and now you're not, and you're just like, this is so awkward. We're not even in the same realm right now. And it's awkward and it's weird. So you gotta go through all that. Decrease the amount of sleep that you have. You got to with family. You're sleeping in a new environment. If you consumed any alcohol, that always messes up people's sleep cycles, usually between 2 and 4 a.m., because that's when the liver and the gallbladder goes to detox and dump. So usually between 2 and 4, people can fall asleep or pass out, but you better believe that they're going to wake up later on that evening. And then decrease movement. You're skipping workouts. You're skipping walks. You're skipping all these things that were good for us. Anybody in here that's a patient, you should be doing a spinal hygiene. Well, m most people, not everybody yet. Spinal hygiene or spinal exercises. A lot of times those get pushed to the back burner. So all these things that you're doing for yourself in your everyday life to keep you healthy are now gone and they've been depleted. So what can we do different? So I think when you look at this stuff, don't, don't freak out. Because when you go to somebody else's house, you obviously can't control all of these. Um, but what you can be controlful is your mindset. So you have to be aware and you have to know what you're going into. The only way to expect something different is decide that something is going to be different, right? You can't go through and into this the exact same way because when you do that, you get the exact same outcome at the end. You get home and you're 10 pounds overweight and you feel like crap. I didn't say that right, crap. You feel like crap and it's just, it's not where you want to be and it's not where you were when you left and now coming home you're like, oh, all this stuff just happened. Now this is where I'm at right now. If people come to your house, I think that's 10 times more stressful. <laughs> so thankfully, people don't travel. Well, they do travel here, but over the holidays, we're usually traveling back home. But when people come to your house, it's 10 times more stressful. Because then you have to cook for people, and you have to clean for people, and you have to, and then when they leave, then you have to re-clean for people. Yeah, you guys get it. So <laughs> it's, a whole, it's a whole thing, you know this. So with that being said, changing that mindset before you go into the day, the week, the weekend, the trip, whatever it may be, doing that beforehand is gonna be huge because then we can get different outcomes. So how to handle emotional stress. I'm gonna give you these, actually, let's do this first. Can you see that? Uh, I don't know how to make this better. I don't know how to make this better or make this bigger. Oh wait, hold on. Zoom. Let's not zoom in. There we go. Making moves, making moves. Look at me. I'm so techy. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay. I want you guys to kind of see. I know it's a picture. It's because I don't know how to make a new one <laughs> on a computer. I don't know how to use a computer. So I don't know how to make a new one of these, but this is one of the best things that I can show you. If there is a subluxation, if there's a misalignment in the spine that you hear us say over and over and over, if you come in, you're like, ah, oh, it's that pesky C2. Well, then this is the chart you need to look at. And I told a bunch of people, I said, before you come, make sure you look at your blue chart. Make sure you have those kind of in your mind frame because when you come to look at this, you can figure out the emotions that are there to set with it. So anything from, and you have to know that there's, and anybody that wants this, just let us know that we can get names and I can text it to you if that's easier. I would email it to you, but I actually have it on my phone that I can text them. And then when I get it, when I figure out how to use a computer, I'll actually type it up and hand them to people, but I don't know how to do that. So all these different things. So the liver, T2, T5, and T8, the liver is associated with anger. So if you have motions, emotions that are irrational, frustration, or aggression, and I'm not saying that those are your emotions, here's what happens with an emotional trigger. Usually it comes down to one point in time. So if it's not a person, mother, father, teacher, preacher, or a situation that happened to you that was maybe violent or aggressive or someone that, that called you out in one thing or the other, if it wasn't a single person, if it was a situation, or if, it was, if it's how you view certain instances, 
The reason I put this one on here is because a lot of them are familial, so they come back to be a family, a family chain or a family of motion. Um, the best thing you can do is figure out what emotion it's going to, and I'm not saying all of your subluxations are emotionally driven because that's not the case, but if you think that it is an emotional trigger, figure out what emotion it goes to. And then from there, when we go to adjust that area, I'll show you what we do. Okay, here's different things that you can do to handle emotional stress. I'm gonna go back to what we were just talking about. Just give me one second, okay? You can meditate, you can pray, and you can give gratitudes. Gratitude is one of the fastest ways to actually increase happiness, joy, and then change someone's emotional state. So giving gratitude is one of the best things you can do. All of these right here, all of these gastrols every morning, actually we've changed our morning routine. So it's gotten a little different because this is something that we've been missing out on. Um, we're supposed to be doing it, but because we don't sit down all at the same spot, we've been missing out. But the gastrols, G has to do with a gratitude. So everyone has to start out with gratitudes before we see any patient or any people in the office. A is the action step. There's so much that has to be done during a day. I can't possibly, to make that list is just, out of control but if I can get one action step done I feel less guilty at the end of the day I got my one action step done usually it's something bigger so when you don't do it you feel terrible and you'll usually do it by the day end but one action step and then S is for service so one form of service that you're gonna do and it can be anything from be present to wash the dishes for my husband to not feel resentful because I'm washing the dishes for the eighth time to it's, it's literally anything like that I don't really get resentful about the dishes it's my time to meditate so but it's but it's one of those things. So GAS is your gratitude, your actions, and your service. Affirmations. So affirmations, emotional entangling of friends and family. Um, this is awful to say. Sometimes you have to remove yourself away from those people. If it's a friend, it's easier. If it's family, it's harder. Um, but removing yourself away from that person is one of the best things that you can do is removing yourself from the situation. If you can't, then taking a 10-minute walk, brisk walk, so pretty quickly, is one of the best ways to change an emotional state. Um, they've done, they actually have done so many studies on something that's 10 minutes of action or movement and showing how that changes the mindset and it's just, it's night and day what you can do. You could also go into a mirror and just grin for about 10 minutes. Um, that's one of the best ways to do it as well, but one makes you feel less foolish than the other. <laughs> so here's how you do it when you get adjusted. When you know, when you know the area, I'm just gonna know that I'm gonna be texting this out. When you know the area that is bothersome to you, if you think it's an emotional trigger and you come to that and you're like, <sighs> gallbladder, T4, always there, resentment, whether it's resentment of whatever kind, knowing that it's there and knowing that that could be one of your emotional triggers, the first thing you can do is you can give forgiveness. And giving forgiveness doesn't mean that you get to give forgiveness to that person and they have to know it. It's that forgiveness to yourself that this is how you're feeling about it. I wanna say one more thing. Every time you get adjusted and you go and you unleash that subluxation, you unlock it and the body begins to heal, you have so many neurological pathways that become open and what it's trying to do is it's trying to rewire itself. Because it's been in a place, it's been hardwired. So when you have an emotional trigger and you know that, when you get to that area and we get ready to adjust it, you have to start doing things over and over and over in the brain to change your mindset. Because 90% of the thoughts you had yesterday are the exact same thoughts you're going to have today are the exact same thoughts you're gonna to have tomorrow. So the only way you can do it is having that pattern interrupt. And when you go to adjust, it's a pattern interrupt. You have open neurological pathways. So use it and do something with it. Don't, don't pop up and go straight out to the car and get in the car and like hail out of here to wherever next place that you have to rush off to. So give yourself that second. When I ask people to walk, take that second, reset your mind so that we know when you go to leave that things are gonna be different. So giving forgiveness is one way. The second way is understanding. So it's through, it's through understanding, essentially. I, I wouldn't choose that action, but the fact that you chose that action is your deal that you have to deal with, and I completely understand where it's coming from. It's understanding, it's not, it's not a full forgiveness, but it's a different mindset of where you're coming from. Can also help those. And then the last one is through affirmation. If you're like, I'm not doing a mindset change, I'm not doing an understanding change, I'm not doing a forgiveness change, affirmation is one of the best things that you can do. So I actually have a woman that um, 
told me it's always been difficult for her to speak her piece. And I went to adjuster one day, and I adjuster C5, which goes to your larynx, pharynx, vocal cords, and I said, I don't know if this is you, but I think this is an emotional trigger, and I think you have a hard time saying what you want to say. And she's like, looked up at me, and she's like, yes. She's like, how'd you know that? I'm like, I don't know. It's just something that we share, right? And so knowing that is one of her emotional triggers, knowing that she has to speak her truth, that she's confident enough to speak that. So let's say if it's, what do we got on there? Fear, backside of fear, freedom, maybe, fear, depends what, it's, what you're fearful of. If it depends what that fear is for, if it's fear of being your authentic self, then it's, then it's like pride or it's, it's whatever the opposite is for you, or it's freedom. It's like, I feel free and comfortable when I'm my authentic self. That's the stuff you restart playing over and over and over in your head. Because when we go and we adjust it, we do a pattern interrupt, all those new neurological pathways are now there to be rewired for something different. One of the coolest things that I ever saw is a guy that was doing um, healing for people and healing of all these different crazy things. And it was through visual and auditory healing. So they would sit in front of a, a screen or a, a screen basically that was up close and they play light and then different noise would go with it and it would help them neurologically repattern. He was working with a chiropractor and he said, I never knew how much crazy stuff chiropractors can do. He's like, to sit on my system, you have to sit on his system for 15 minutes to a half an hour every time, up to 150 times before you start getting change. He said, I found out that you can get the same neurological interruption and new neurological pathways opening up after one adjustment, the same as sitting on his machine for 60 times. 60 times, are you crazy? 60 times at 15 to 30 minutes and you're just now starting to open new neurological pathways. Like, that's crazy to me. When there's something so easy and efficient, yeah, it's just absolutely wild. So emotion is one that I do wanna look at because over these next few weeks, going into Thanksgiving, going into Christmas, going into uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever it may be, all those big holidays where you spend a lot of time with people, um, emotional triggers are gonna be, is gonna be a huge one. Hmm, that's the best, huh? It's the best, ah! There we go. Now we're making moves. Um, so whatever it may be, and even if you look on your, on, can I use this for a second? Mm -hmm. Even if you look on your sheet and you notice you're like, okay, T9. T9 goes to my major digestive center, detox, immunity, gallbladder, liver, stomach, pancreas, spleen, low back, or mid back and shoulders. When you go, if you look through there and you find it, or even if you find the organ, um, that can help you kind of localize and trigger some stuff, okay? Um, the other thing you want to look at is maybe chakras, because maybe it's not neurologic, maybe it's energetic, which is, chiropractic is energetic, obviously, right? We're just talking about the metaphysical, metaphysical aspects. But if you're constantly adjusting your sacrum over and over and over, and it's right at you have that base and that root chakra, if you come to your sacrum, which is S1, coccyx, and testes over, and you're just like not thinking, not, there's no that emotional connection, um, you're like, no, it doesn't really correspond. But then if you think about it and it's your, it's your root, right? It's, it's survival. So maybe it's home, maybe it's um, food, maybe it's something like that, but maybe it's something deeper and it's energetic and not so much neurologic, which does become energetic. Right. Just so you know, they're, they're all interchanged, just guys know. Okay, good. So the food you eat. So this is the other hard one again, like I said, because you're not at your own home. Um, try to increase the amount of organic food that you can possibly get. The larger the animal, try to make it organic. And I know that's so hard. I Thanksgiving, I made this beautiful organic turkey, and I, I stuffed it not full of bread, but of quinoa and millet and cranberries and all these other things. And a family member that is not on my side said, I don't want to eat that. That's not like my mom's or not like my grandma's. And that's fair because we have all these emotional triggers. And I'm like... It's nostalgic. And I was like, I know what you're saying, but that literally is poisoning you. And I can't, in my house, I'm not going to do that. He brought over his own turkey and he did it himself. That's awesome. Eat that. And then at my table before we sat down, I said, if you guys don't care about eating toxins and you don't care about eating genetically modified food and you don't care about eating something that's clean, please eat that turkey because I would love to have this for leftovers. And I said it. And I, at first I was like, is this rude? But everyone's like, I get it, it's cool, and it is cool, because it's, it's just, it is what it is. 
And that's how I felt, and they knew that, and they know that about me, so I'm that, yeah, I'm that girl, I know. And they know it, so it's fine, but, but knowing that, try, the bigger the animal gets, try to decrease the amount of toxins that are going to go into it. Eliminate the amount of GMO foods, such as, I listed them all out for you, and if anyone wants these slides, again, let me know, but there is, well, they're working on more, but as of right now, these are your set, 100% um, genetically modified foods that you'll find the most in Thanksgiving Christmas dinners. Eliminate the amount of alcohol to a minimum. And if you choose to listen to nothing that I've said when it comes to food, fine, that is your choice. Um, apple cider vinegar, water, lemon, a little honey. Try to increase your stomach acid before you go into a meal. Getting that stomach acid up, and the older that you are, the stomach acid starts to decrease. So doing that before you eat a meal, that's a weird combination for you, something you're not normally eating, or if you're gonna eat in a larger consumption, then try to increase that stomach acid as much as possible. Standard process, so don't, be, don't get me wrong, right now, we are talking, this is half prevention, but this is half not prevention. This is knowing that you're gonna do something wrong that's gonna harm you and then choosing to do this to help kind of, not cover it up, but process it. So standard process, Zypan is the other thing it can do, but it also increases hydrochloric acid. But I took Zypan the whole time, like anytime we travel abroad, I do that because I'm gonna come in contact with a lot of things I probably normally wouldn't eat bacteria, viruses, all of that. And so when it gets into my stomach, I want to make sure I have high hydrochloric acid. So I do do it when I travel. And then sometimes going into a meal, I'm like, this is going to be awful. If we're going to eat pasta for a meal, something I never eat, and then it's sitting there in front of us because we're a family, I'm going to eat it. But I don't want to feel like I'm being punished the entire rest of the day. So I will use that. Um, decrease the amount of food that's being consumed. This is probably the hardest part. Mm -hmm. After you have Thanksgiving, you're gonna eat again. So you don't have to pretend like you're never gonna eat again. So when you're done eating, take your plate up, take it away, and put it somewhere. If you sit back down and you're like, I can't do it. I have to have more, whatever it is, sweet potatoes. I'm dying, I need it. If you need it, then fine. Get back up, go and get a plate and sit back down. But don't just let it sit there in front of you. The longer it sits there in front of you, the worse decisions that are made. Fair? Okay. <laughs> um, and then bring supplements. Make sure that your body's getting the nutrients that you should be getting. If you're going to be gone traveling, doing all these things, then make sure your body is getting everything that it needs to help combat everything else. And then you have to move. Go for a walk. Get outside. Move around. If everyone's sitting in the living room because that's or in the kitchen, play with the kids that are around. Pick a child up. Move them. I mean, don't do it sloppily, but... Sloppily? Is that a word? Sloppily? I don't think it's a word. Pick them up with some grace, but um, don't go all willy-nilly and doing anything that's going to throw anything where it's not supposed to be, but use energy. Clear the table. Clean up the house a little bit. Do something to get you moving a little bit, and then when you're ready, go and sit back down and, and mingle. Because when you, when you are with family, there's just this, whether they, they want to do it or not, whether they hurt feelings or not, there's just love there, and you know that, and you feel that. So wanting to be around that is, right? That's, that's human nature, that's what we do. And so after you go and do all that, don't avoid people all day, go and sit down and converse because that also is something for your sanity. If you have a chiropractor in your hometown, please go see them. Anytime I travel, I have my husband. Thanksgiving, I'm gonna have my brother. And then there's a guy in town that's adjusted me my whole life. So me, yes, I'm lucky. I have three that I can call on regularly. But if you have someone, when you're home, see them, make an appointment. If you don't, make sure you get to your appointment before you leave. Make sure you get to your appointment right when you get back. Add one if you need one. And if you can't do any of those things, make sure all the things that we've taught you, all the spinal hygiene, make sure you're doing it. Oh, I love that. Movement of the spine. So 90% of the movement of the spine is what charges the brain. So when the spine isn't moving, when there's immobility there, one of the things that lacks is the biggest micronutrient that the brain has to function off of, which is proprioception, which is awareness in space. When you have those misalignments in the spine, they're not moving properly, they're not functioning properly. Breakdown and wear and tear go out to every single cell, tissue, and organ in that area. And same thing, the place that goes up into the brain, it doesn't light up the way that it's supposed to. So every time you get adjusted, all they see all these new neurological patterns lighting up in the brain, that's your body sitting there ready to rewire. Um, great, we're not moving, we're dying. These are our tidbits. I'm just putting this out there again. I don't want to be do, like doom and gloom, but I do want you to know. 
When it comes to how much sugar that the body can process, so the body can process six table or six teaspoons of sugar. This is actually before it turns into fat and before the kidney shuts down. The kidney will literally say, like, I can't process anymore, I'm not doing it anymore. And it will immediately get stored as fat or, I mean, all these sugar handling issues that we're seeing, diabetes, prediabetes, I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's mayhem. The average American consumes 32 teaspoons of sugar a day. That's 126 grams. That's the average. Um, soda, well, it's not talking about soda. It's talking about uh, 100 grams of sugar, 8 tablespoons, which is equivalent to 2.5 Cokes, does shut down the immune system up to 5 hours. So the immune system will shut down. It will work about 40% of its efficiency rate which is not weird, right? When you come back from a holiday, cakes and candies and cookies and things you're not drinking and all of these things come into play and a lot of people get sick, right? The flu season's between, well, it was November to February, now it's October to March, it got longer. So, <laughs> so now that it's longer, I mean, all the holidays happen during those times, right? We're talking Halloween all the way into um, Valentine's Day. And not enough sleep leads to the stress hormone leading to more inflammation. Again, if you listen to nothing that I say, and that is fine, but if you listen to nothing I say, give yourself some of these tips when you do get home. Try to give yourself an extra day. Getting your extra day to settle right back into the routine is 10 times better than traveling, getting home late, and then knowing that you have to be up at 7 a.m. to go to work and trying to power through the next week. Go to bed as early as possible. Increase supplementation. Um, I mean, fish oil, yes, but I mean, it's your multivitamins, your fish oil, it's your D, it's, it's the whole shebang. The only other one that we use is uh, Immuplex. I will use that when I'm traveling. Uh, Immuplex is just kind of a boost in all your multivitamins, and then it also has gland in it as well, so all the glands that help immune function. So it has liver, it has thymus, it has all these extra things that kind of help the immune system be boost. And be sure to add another adjustment. Increase the movement of the spine, changes and charges the brains, rewire those emotional blocks, so use these next few weeks, emotional unblocking, it's, it's really huge. Everybody that, not everybody, anybody that I've kind of tuned into that I think have emotional things going on, um, we've had discussions and there's been open dialogue, um, but those are, you see some really awesome things. Patterns that hold deep over and over and over again, when you get to unleash some of those emotional blocks, um, the body becomes this crazy new dynamic entity so it's, it's it's super awesome i want you guys all to have a happy and healthy holiday and i want to thank everybody i know i've been here the last two days and then tomorrow is a full day and i've gotten now into this my schedule usually isn't as rigorous as dr andrews but i've noticed that when it is more rigorous and we're moving and i'm a, and in it and just adjusting and it's not chatter and all this talk and it's fun to hang out and be together and do all that because I love that but there's something really magic that happens and I haven't noticed it in a really long time and just these last two days I've really got to do it as as it's something that they really love to do the last two days has been just such an amazing flow to it and so it just it makes me come back to why I love doing what I do and it's this it's this physical aspect, but it's this emotional aspect, and it's this metaphysical aspect, and the spiritual aspect, so I really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys using God's healthcare system, essentially. Um, thank you so much. Have a healthy and safe and happy holiday. And I know it's the beginning, but have a happy one.